Good morning! Our topic is the simplex minimization method. For the steps in solving a minimization problem, these are similar to maximization except for three processes. The CJ column of the initial table begins with the coefficients of artificial variables and of slack variables in the objective with positive coefficients in the constraints. Instead of looking for the most positive quantity in the CJ minus ZJ row, for the optimum column, look for the most negative entry. The optimum table or final table has entries in the ZJ minus ZJ row which are either zero or positive. Minimization problems commonly deal with cost. Slack variables do not contribute any amount to cost, but artificial variables contribute the biggest amount to cost in a minimization problem. It contributes to the objective an amount greater than any of the coefficients of solution variables. In representing the contribution of the artificial variable to the objective, we may use a quantity which is a power of 10 greater than any of the coefficients found in the constraints and objective. Of course, powers of 10 are numerals such as 10, 100, 1000, and so on. For the summary of converting constraints to equations in a minimization problem, we add an artificial variable if the symbol is equal to. We add a slack variable if the symbol is less than or equal to. We subtract a slack variable but add an artificial variable if the symbol is greater than or equal to. For our example problem, let us look into the problem that we use in the graphical method. A small generator burns two types of fuel, low sulfur and high sulfur, to produce electricity. For one hour, each gallon of low sulfur emits three units of sulfur dioxide, generates four kilowatts electricity, and costs 160 pesos. Each gallon of high sulfur emits 5 units of sulfur dioxide, generates 4 kilowatts, and costs 150. The Environmental Protection Agency insists that the maximum amount of sulfur dioxide that can be emitted per hour is 15 units. Suppose that at least 16 kilowatts must be generated per hour, how many gallons of high sulfur and low sulfur must be utilized per hour in order to minimize the cost of fuel. Okay, so again, let us look into the unknown and the constraints given. Okay, so we have here our low sulfur. Okay, so let's say this is X1. For our high sulfur, This is our X2. Okay, so what are the constraints? We have there the sulfur dioxide. We have the kilowatts. We have the cost, okay? The low sulfur uses 3 units of sulfur dioxide, generates 4 kilowatts, and costs 160. For the high sulfur, we have there 5 units of sulfur dioxide, generates 4 kilowatts of electricity, and costs 150. Okay, so for the sulfur dioxide, it should be less than or equal to 15. And for the electricity, it should be greater than or equal to 16 kilowatts. Okay, so for our objective, that is to minimize the cost that is equal to we have 160x1 plus 150x2 okay 
So, subject to the following constraints. So, what are our explicit constraints? We have here 3x plus 5, 3x1 plus 5x2 is less than or equal to 15. We have there 4x1 plus 5x2 is greater than or equal to 16. Okay, of course, our implicit x1 and x2 should be greater than or equal to 0. For this one, we have there, this is less than or equal to, so we can just add a slack variable. 3x1 plus 5x2 plus s1 is equal to 15. Okay, for the next one, we have there greater than or equal to. So it means that we need to subtract a slack variable and then add an artificial variable so this will be 4x1 plus 5x2 minus s2 plus a1 is equal to 16 okay so of course all of this should be reflected in our objective we have there plus 0 s1 plus 0 s2 plus what is the value of our artificial variable so since these are in hundreds so artificial variable should be in so this will be 1,000 A1. Okay. So for our first table, we have there CJ, broad, quantity, X1, X2, S1, S2, and A1. Okay. So we have here 160, 150, 00, 0 1,000. Okay. So for this one, let us use this okay so we have there s1 and a1 okay s1 is 0 a1 is 1000 then for the quantity let us use this okay so we have there 15 and 16 okay so now for the coefficients we have there for the first one we have 3 5 1 0 0 okay then next we have 4 4 there's no S1, so that's 0. We have a negative 1 for the S2 and 1 for the A1, okay? Then, let us compute for the ZJ. We have 0 times 15 plus 1,000 times 16, it's 16,000, okay? Then 0 times 3 plus 1,000 times 4 is 4,000. Then we have 0 times 5 plus 1,000 times 4. We have there 4,000. Then we have 0 negative 1000 and then 1000 okay so let us get cj minus cj we have 160 minus 4000 is negative 3840 okay what about 150 minus 4000 that's negative 3850 then zero minus zero zero we have zero minus negative one it's positive 1000 1,000 minus 1,000 is 0, okay? Then, if in maximization, we choose the most positive, here we choose the most negative, okay? So, what is our optimum column? It's negative 3,850, okay? So, you have it there. The next is compute for the pivot, okay? So, again, the pivot is the quantity divided by the values in the optimum column we have there 15 divided by 5 is 3 and then 16 divided by 4 is 4 okay again we chose the smallest quotient we have there this one okay so this is our outgoing row okay so what are our incoming values this okay so again uh, this all of these values should be divided by the pivot to make this one and this value this should be zero okay okay next we have here cj rod quantity x1 x2 s1 s2 and a1 okay so 160 150 0 0 1000 okay so again our incoming values we have there 150 x2 for the quantity of course again everything should be 
all values should be divided by the pivot to make the pivot 1. Okay? So we have there 15 divided by 5 is, we have 3. Then 3 divided by 5 is 3 over 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And then 1 over 5 is 1 over 5, of course. Then 0, 0. Okay? Then the uh, value included in the optimum column together with the pivot, it should be 0. Okay? So, for this one, we have there 3, 3 over 5, 1, 1 over 5, 0, and 0. They should be multiplied by, okay, so that is 4, positive 4, so they should be multiplied by negative 4. Okay, so plus we have there 16, 4, 4. 0, negative 1, and 1. Okay. So, what are our answers? We have there 4, 8 over 5, 0, negative 4 over 5, negative 1, and 1. Okay. So, let us put this, those values here. Okay. For our entries, we have there A1. Okay. 4, 8 over 5, 0, negative 4 over 5, negative 1, and 1. Okay, let us compute for ZJ. Okay, so we have there 150 times 3 plus 1,000 times 4 is 4,450. Okay, so as you notice, that is from 16,000 down to 4,450. Next, 150 times 3 over 5 plus 1,000 times 8 over 5. So that's 1,650. 150, okay. So that's times 1, 1,000 times 0. Okay, so 150 times 1 over 5 plus 1,000 times negative 4 over 5. That is negative 770. Next, 150 times 0 times 1,000 times negative 1. That's negative 1,000. And we have there 1,000 times 1 plus 150 times 0 is positive 1,000. Okay, so CJ minus ZJ, we have there... 160 minus 1650 is negative 1490. Okay? Zero. Then we have here positive 770, positive 1000, and zero. Okay? So, as you can see, we still have one negative value. Okay? So, this is not the optimum solution or the final solution. So, this will be our optimum column again let us look for our pivot or compute for our pivot so we have there 3 divided by 3 over 5 that's 5 4 divided by 8 over 5 is 5 over 2 so this is smaller so this will be our pivot this is our outgoing row okay so these are our incoming values again for the incoming values okay so this one the pivot should be one and this one should be zero okay so again we have here cj broad quantity x1 x2 s1 s2 a1 so we have here 160 150 zero zero one thousand okay so we have it 160 on the second row. We have 160, okay, x1. Then we have there, all the values should be divided by 8 over 5. So this will be 4 divided by 8 over 5 is 5 over 2. 8 over 5 divided by 8 over 5 is 1. Then 0 divided by 8 over 5 is 0. Negative 4 over 5 divided by 8 over 5 is negative 1 half. Negative 1 divided by 8 over 5 is negative 5 over 8. And positive 1 divided by 8 over 5 is 5 over 8. Okay. Then, it's time to make 3 over 5 0. Okay. So, we have here 5 halves. 1, 0, negative 1 half, negative 5 over 8. And 5 over 8. Okay, they should be multiplied by. So since this is positive 3 over 5, they should be 3. Uh, negative 3 over 5. Okay. Okay. So plus. 
Okay, these values. We have 3, 3 over 5, 1, 1 over 5, 0, and 0. Okay? So, let's compute for those values. Okay? We have here 5 times negative 3 over 5 plus 3 is 3 halves. Then 0, then 1, then 1 half, then 3 over 8, and negative 3 over 8. Okay? So, Let's fill this up. We have 150 x 2. We have there 3 halves, 0, 1, 1 half, 3 over 8, and negative 3 over 8. Okay? Then, we can now compute for our ZJ. We have there ZJ, 150 times 3 halves plus 160 times 5 halves. That is 625. Okay, so from 16,000 down to 4,450 down to 625. Okay, so we have there 150 times 0 plus 160 times 1 is 160. 150 times 1 plus 160 times 0 is 150. 150 times 1 half plus 160 times negative 1 half is negative 5. Then 150 times uh, 3 over 8 plus 160 times negative 5 over 8 is negative 175 over four then we have there 150 times negative 3 8 plus 160 times positive 5 over 8 is 175 over 4 okay so let's compute for cj minus cj we have there 160 minus 160 is 0 150 minus 150 is 0 0 minus negative 5 is 5 0 minus negative 175 over 4 is 175 over 4. And 1,000 minus 175 over 4 is 3825 over 4. Okay. So, as you noticed, there are no negative values anymore. So, we have uh, our final solution here. Okay. So, for this one, these are our values. We have x1 that is the low sulfur we have five halves for our x2 that's high sulfur we have there three halves for a minimum cost of 625 okay